My name is Peter Santanello, and this is Beneath Kyiv, where we journey together in a Kyiv Ukraine through the eyes of the locals. Five episodes, five completely different stories, one amazing city. I'm not gonna act like I don't know you because, because you're a friend. You do. <laughs> All right. Without me talking anymore, where are you taking us? Uh, I am taking you to this bridge. Bridge? Yes. Okay. This is uh, one of my favorite places. So that's where we are going. Cool, cool, mm-hmm. cool. Awesome. Let it be the beginning. I'm half Syrian, half Ukrainian. I was born in Ukraine, in uh, Makivka, and it's a small town next to Donetsk. Then when I was three, we moved to Syria. My father was in the military, and uh, we lived there a couple of years, and then moved to other cities. I ended up in Damascus, and that's my favorite city of all, uh, in Syria, I mean. I uh, had a great job. Uh, I had a lot of friends, and uh, I was happy. And then, the war started, obviously. Yes. And everybody believed that it is quite temporary and it will end soon, like it's just a matter of few months. But I remember when uh, when we were in the taxi and uh, me and my brother sitting in the back and my father was in the front and uh, I remember hearing him crying and so that was the moment I knew that that might not just last for two weeks. You look at a map of uh, the planet of Earth and you see Donetsk. I don't know if there's in the history of humanity one person that's gone from one civil war immediately (laughs) to the next one, like yeah. refugee and like Yeah, I'm attracted, I'm attracted to action. I do love bridges because um, when I am on a bridge, I feel that I am present. And I feel that I am kind of relaxed. There is the end and there is a new beginning and you're in the middle and you're moving and there is a connection and there is a way. I don't know, maybe that's too much of a philosophy, I guess, but uh, that's just the feeling that I get. Every, every single time I get on a bridge, I feel so present, so in the moment. We were planning to spend two weeks in Donetsk to see mom, to see grandmother, you know? That was the plan. Could you feel, because of your experience, like mm. these changes happening, like this, this energy bubbling up or whatever it might, that feeling might be? I have no clue because I've never been through it. Actually, it started from the Maidan. Uh, it started from watching the news, but hearing what is being reported. Because that was exactly the same scenario that happened in, the, in, in Damascus. You know, the way the news uh, was reported and the way uh, things were presented. And again, you know, people in, in that area were as hopeful as people in Damascus back then. Interesting. And they, they used to say and repeat the exact same phrases, saying that, oh, this is temporary, this will end in a month, this will end in a month and a half. Well, it didn't. The day we had our tickets to Kiev, 
Uh, that was the day uh, when uh, the train station in Donetsk got uh, bombed and it was on fire and I was reading that on the news and I knew that we have a train to take from there. And what were your initial feelings of leaving Donetsk? You weren't as much attached as Damascus or were you? And I remember the moment when I left Damascus, it was exactly the moment when I started falling in love with the city. And I was saying to myself, I am so lucky that I live in such a beautiful city. And it happened again in Donetsk when I said to myself, oh, finally, I love Donetsk so much. And this is the city where I want to be. The next thing you know is that you are on a train with just few things that you had time to, to pack, moving to Kiev. Do you consider yourself a refugee or not? Do you ever think about this? You know, that's an interesting question because it depends on what's your definition of the word refugee. Well, in terms of like, if, I, if we take a look at what happened, so yeah, I, I lived in a country and then I had to leave that country because of war and because that was my desire. I guess, yeah, that makes me somehow a refugee. But I don't want to belittle the suffering and, and the hardship that some refugees, like those Syrians who fled Syria and went to Germany, or for example, those who have lost a member of their family due to the war, or have suffered some other scary things uh, due to the situation. So in just a short period of time, you went from Damascus, Donetsk, now you're in Kyiv. What was that first feeling when you're like, okay, I'm going to make my home here? I had this feeling a um, long time ago. And that was the first time I visited Kiev. And I remember coming out of the underground on Maidan. Uh -huh. And the underground, you know, the one that's in, on Maidan, it's uh, very complex and it's dark and has a lot of people, a lot of beggars. And then you come out and there is this whole scene that is opening up for you of, of beauty and fountains and people and buildings and sunshine. And that was the moment that I felt that I can die just to live here. <laughs> Yeah, because I thought that that is my city. I was made here. <laughs> this is one of my favorite places here. Um, it has been many years ago when I first came here for a visit. I remember when I had this look on Kiev from up there and it felt so, it felt so liberating. Because you can see everything, or what? Because of the beauty that you can see. Can you say you feel safe with you? If we talk about stability, of course, no, I don't feel stability here. But I feel that I am in my right place in the right time, and that's what makes me feel safe. Okay, so get this, I heard these, these doors that slide over, I heard hmm. are supposedly reinforced doors for if there's a nuclear winter, a nuclear holocaust, and the population can go and stay in these metros. This is what I was told in all um, Soviet cities. Stalin built these. Really? Yeah. So. This big door closes. Okay, I don't know if it's rumor or true, but what would it be for? It could be that or for floods, right? I would say. I allow myself to fall in love with the city I am in, and so far that's the city where I feel at home. Here? Yes. More so than Damascus when it was yes. peaceful? Yes, yes, more so why? than any other city. Mm, why? I am looking for the statue of uh, the monument of motherland. Oh, way over there. Yes, because that monument somehow tells you about the spirit of Kiev, uh, the spirit of this feminine spirit, but strong, that had to build herself mm -hmm. from ashes. And this is the kind of a city that helps you to do that, to build yourself again from ashes, to arise from ashes. And that's how somehow I feel so intimate and so close to it and I feel that we are you know um, yeah I feel that this city is like a grandmother 
Mm-hmm. So, Ileana, you moved to Heath. You didn't have a job lined up. How did you start this language school? So, um, we have some cookies. Please feel free yeah, to mix this rigid topic of grammar with some sweets and some fun. And I guarantee the fun, well, and uh, the school guarantees the cookies. I was working uh, as an English teacher in a school and then uh, some things happened and we were like as a team we were not sure if that school is going to is going to continue you know mm -hmm. working or not i was just sitting at home and thinking that okay that i need to go over and over and then i thought why not to think outside of the box like if i just if i just move one step forward what would i do if i had like all the chances what would i do and then i said to myself i would open my own school so do you think if if you didn't have to leave Damascus in Donetsk, do you think you would have had the courage to start a business no, on your own? No, never. I'm sure about that. Like, never. Because for me at least, you only get the courage to do something new when you don't have anything to lose anymore. Uh, and then you say, okay, so what is there to lose? And you feel free uh -huh. to, to risk it. That's cool. Yes. And that's the thing I've always wanted to try. The zip line. Yes. Here. Especially here. What? Let's do it. Let's do let's it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. We've been on a bridge too long. Of course. Let's let's, let's get the are ride. Sleeping by now. Yay. Let's do that. I once read this thing that you cannot label things as good or bad. So I guess that's part of the experience when things get tough. They are really tough, that's what they are, like, you suffer a lot. But then you understand that that just gave you another opportunity to open something up inside you, or to move a step forward, or to try something new. And that's a blessing in itself. Do you understand that that was the best thing that ever happened to you? But of course you would never wish that to happen again. Yay! Let's go! <laughs>